everyone welcome to queen Essie's diary of a hairy woman this episode is going to be completely different i know we've talked about like just body hair and like how it's accepted and dating how it goes you know when you're a hairy person like myself but today i want to talk about what i do <laughs> besides body hair activism <laughs> so um i'm actually a painter well i sew as well and I do self photography. You guys already know this if you follow my Instagram account. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to kind of like share that with y'all because that's really my whole life. <laughs> like, I mean, like I've studied like visual arts since high school and I graduated uh, in 2020 from university in painting and drawings. And so, yeah, so I really wanted to share that with y'all. And today I'm wearing like I don't know why I'm showing out what I'm wearing, but like, it's just that it's not my usual outfit. <laughs> um, but, and I'm wearing this shirt that I painted. And so, yeah, so I wanted to kind of like talk about art. <laughs> and like, because ever since I became a body hair activist, that's where my art style kind of changed. And I kind of knew that I wanted to normalize female body hair through my paintings as well. That's why I'm going to introduce my work to y'all. I really want you guys to kind of like, into the world that I've created um, through painting and, and photography and it's like really recently that I started bringing my photography work into my artistic practice um, usually it was just just painting and then I really found this passion <laughs> for taking for, like for taking pictures and um, then I also started sewing a little bit and like kind of like creating characters with like you know making garments to kind of like make the character feel real and give it a certain physical presence in our world and so i'll be talking a bit about that and just sharing um a lot <laughs> anyways so welcome to my studio it's quite messy so i'm just gonna show you guys a real quick tour of it all right <laughs> So, um, this is the space, um, this is <laughs> where I kind of set up my lights, um, but yeah, so, uh, all my work is here because yesterday, um, people came to visit my studio, uh, because they're planning a exhibition later on and they didn't want to see my work, um, and see, uh, what paintings they could select for this upcoming exhibition so you kind of get to see a bit of my work I'll show images while I'm talking as well this is one that I'm currently working on um, and uh, you kind of see oh some of my works are like in bags um, and this is a work I'll be talking about later on as well and this was like just something I was trying out and uh, another work that I'll be talking about and so on so this is like kind of like a quick tour of my second home so in high school I really uh well before high school when I was a kid I really enjoyed drawing and my parents kind of saw that I really was passionate about it and so in high school they really put me into a visualized program and that's kind of where I kind of like painted for the first time and realized how much I loved it and I was like I'm gonna be a painter that's it because like before I wanted to like create cartoons and also I wanted to make chocolate <laughs> I was like really in love with chocolate at the time so I was like oh, I'm gonna make chocolate uh, but anyways that changed after I fell in love with painting I was like yeah I'm gonna be a painter that's my new, that's my passion and ever since then I when I got to college I was also studying visual arts but when I got to university I was like I'm gonna choose something more specific because when I was studying visual arts I got to do sculpture and different things and I realized that I wasn't passionate about all these other mediums and so I really decided to focus just on painting and drawing when I got to university so yeah so in 2019 um, after creating the lavender project which I'll I'll make a video about that as well because I think I haven't like really taken the time to talk about this project so I'll make a video uh, later on and sharing images and poetry and like everything that was kind of like happening in my mind and I really want to go in depth with y'all <laughs> um, but really um, I uh, in 2019 when I created the lavender project I um, kind of realized that now I was kind of like tired of being ashamed of my appearance and that's when I 
fully embraced my chest hair and later on I stopped shaving completely embraced the body hair that was growing on my body you know all of my body hair I embraced it and so after that I knew that through painting because before when I was painting I was just painting whatever since I, I was painting myself sometimes I was just painting just just anything because when you're in school to just give you a theme and a project to do so you just paint and and you make sure it fits in the theme that they're giving you when a teacher gives you a theme yeah so um, yeah, I was, I was just you know painting painting according to the theme at school, and I wasn't sure, you know, I didn't even know my style back then, and it's really like in 2019, uh, sorry, not in 2019, 2018, that I started to really know what I wanted to paint, and that was like black women. I knew I was gonna paint black women. I knew I was gonna bring that diversity, uh, that representation into the art world, but. Um, I, f I still felt like something was missing and in 20 2018 I created the painting called Growth. <laughs> I'm doing that because I'm going to show y'all what it looks like. And actually this painting is uh, displayed at the Musée des Arts of Montreal. Uh, it's a museum, well I said it in French but like Montreal, <laughs> oh my gosh, Montreal M Museum of Fine Arts. Uh, yeah, it's a really big museum here in Montreal and it's going to be part of, this artwork is going to be part of uh, an exhibition by Stanley Février, um, which is an artist who is creating this performative um, artwork called Madi. And my painting is going to be one, uh, it's going to be one of the artworks being shown in that uh, exhibition. So I'm really happy about that. And But I really want to get to like how this all happened because to me, um, as a kid, I always knew I was going to be an artist, right? And But painting became such an important medium for me especially because I was really shy yes I was super shy <laughs> and I was so insecure which I think I've shared that with y'all um, but painting was a way for me to heal because sometimes I felt these strong urges to create to create basically a character or, or myself um, that fully expressed what I was going through at the time especially with my appearance and my struggles with uh, my body hair and having to remove it and I created an artwork at the time that was like I think in 2017 2016 no I think it was 2016 I created an artwork called uh, Il faut souffrir pour être so you must suffer to be beautiful or beauty is pain and here's the painting and um I wanted to express how much I hated that sentence. It's something that I was told by my mother and my aunt because um, we I had to shave, I had to remove my body hair, I had to wax and all these things. And I was just like so tired of, of crying or because I, I hated myself and tired of um, having to remove it all the time and because it grew it grew so fast like I would shave or after two days it was growing back and it was just painful to see that. Um, but um, art was like a way for me to kind of express what I was going through and when I created that work it was just it was like a large weight was lifted off of me and I knew that um, I, actually in that moment when, in 2016 I didn't know that this was a sign it's really in 2018 that that strong urge happened again where I felt like I need to express what I'm going through I'm tired I'm tired of hating myself and then I created growth which I mentioned is at the museum and so I really wanted to show the pain in this character's eyes of having to remove uh, her body hair but not only that I represented body hair through also flower petals because they're beautiful, right? And I feel like body hair is, is beautiful and can be uh, if you want it to be. And you could choose to be. <laughs> you could choose, basically, if you want body hair to be beautiful on you, you gotta choose that to make it beautiful on yourself. Because society's always gonna tell you what's ugly and what's not, and, and it's gonna make money off of your insecurities, but you should really choose to wake up and be like hey I don't care about what society says I think it's beautiful because it's on me and it's part of me and it's what makes me different and special and so um, through that I created that painting growth and I wanted to show through the petals that you know she's also removing these petals on her face on her body um, 
because she's taught that those petals are ugly and disgusting and so we see her shaving sh shaving and um and really painfully looking at herself in the mirror that she's holding up so i really wanted to express that pain and the hurt in the character's eyes and it's really then that i knew oh my gosh i found my style i know what i'm doing i know who i am and so it would happen where i, w I started a bit painting um hairy woman um but it wasn't with pride then it was just that i felt like hey i'm sorry to feel comfortable painting um you know women that are hairy and not and when i ca talk about hairiness i'm not talking about just armpit hairs or a bit of leg hairs i'm talking about the areas that that are not re being represented that women do have sideburns a mustache a, a, a beard you know all these things that were constantly uh being taught to remove and so I wanted to, to show women as they are and how they can proudly um, show themselves as themselves. After that, I just, just after the Lavender Project in 2019, that's when I really knew that that was going to be my mission and I was going to create, um, I was just going to create and bring that representation that I feel was lacking in every in, in the art world on social media I want to show that and show you know through myself that a woman can love herself completely even with things that she was taught are insecurities or that she was taught she should be insecure about like that I should be insecure about and so yeah so through photography online I was posing with my chest hair with my body hair and ashamed and through my painting I decided to create characters from my imagination and just create characters that are just proudly showing their body hair and it doesn't necessarily mean that the painting is about body hair but simply that all my characters have body hair and it's just part of who they are it's not something that they're ashamed of it's not something that um, they want to hide um, except sometimes when I'm specifically talking about a certain topic especially something like my painting um, thinking about romance um, so thinking about romance is just something I was thinking about after reading the book plucked a history of hair removal by Rebecca M Herzig um, and I've mentioned this book before, but basically in that book she kind of mentions um, that uh, women were practically ending their lives over the fact that they were hairy and they felt that they couldn't find a partner. And through this painting, I kind of wanted to show this woman who's this woman who's in her room, just thinking about love, just thinking about just completely nude and, and seeing herself in the mirror and thinking about love. Because I think that oftentimes we don't, we're afraid to be ourselves, to accept our appearance and our differences because we feel that no one will love us. And that had been maybe, I think for most hairy girls, is one of the, one of their biggest fears. And that's why I had made a video about dating. Um, because I want to tell people that, yes, there are people that will love you and that don't care about your body hair or simply love it too. Um, and this painting uh, thinking about romance kind of like expressed the pain I used to have and that I feel other women can relate um, it really shows it shows just it shows a woman who's just tired and depressed and and is just tired of even looking at herself in the mirror it's just like wow I can't believe I was made this way and that's what I thought growing up because you know, I have a sister, and she's not hairy, but I am. And I just thought, why me? Why does everything have to happen to me? All the bad stuff. Why do I have to take all that? Why? And so painting has always been a way to kind of heal my inner child. Or just just to be able to, to talk about something that I had inside or, you know that brought me a lot of pain and in a way suffering emotional suffering and so yeah so that's uh this painting that i made and we kind of see um 
yeah there's also it's actually like kind of like a two-part series but usually series are very more are, are very much more similar to each other but I kind of connected uh, thinking about romance with another painting that I'll be showing very soon um, through this kind of like this bush with the uh, pedestal um, and I'll be talking about this painting in another video but not now because I don't want to spoil it <laughs> but you kind of got to see it but it's not yet that I'm going to be showing y'all and explaining what it's about. After being around my little cousins, I kind of realized that as an artist, another painful thing is that you feel like you have to be like Picasso or like Basquiat or like these famous artists to be successful, to feel a certain validation for yourself. Because validation can be outside but it could also be inside uh, because of the outside. So you feel like... If I look a certain way, I will love myself. I will think I'm beautiful. And the outside world will think I'm beautiful. And with painting and art, it's also the same thing. If I make art this way, other people will think my art is great. And they will think that I'm an incredible artist. And therefore, I will feel like an incredible artist. And I, I tend to say that art heals. But art also is a reflection of life. And for me, I was able to express what I was going through through my art. But also, I was almost getting lost as well because in life you have an identity. And when you become an artist, you also have an identity. You also have something that brings more to your main identity. <laughs> so what I mean by that is that, okay, my identity is I'm a black woman. I'm half Haitian, I'm half Ivorian. I, you know, I have these values, I have these, you know, morals, all these things because of how I was raised and I'm very passionate, I love to encourage others around me, I love to push others around me uh, in a positive way, <laughs> like encourage them to be their best, uh, the best version of themselves uh, and, and much more, you know. Uh, but as an artist as well, in, in life I feel like purpose feels like something that drives you and, and for me I felt like I needed a purpose in my work. I didn't want to just paint to paint. Um, and when I became a body hair activist, I knew my purpose. I knew that I wanted to normalize female body hair through my art, but also to tell stories, also to express pain, also to um, heal, to heal others through my work. And because I felt that even through people's reactions after I had my solo exhibition, which I'll also talk about later, <laughs> after I had my solo exhibition, um, people were letting me know how much they felt seen through my work. And uh, that's why I feel like I just want to be one of the greatest painters the world has ever seen, right? And I just got out of school, so everything is kind of like the beginning. I'm doing a lot of, you know, group exhibitions and everything, but it's just the beginning. I'm still a baby in the art world, but... <laughs> Anyways, um, but yeah, so with uh, thinking of romance, it was really about thinking of yourself, thinking of how you feel about yourself, and, and basically how that... Um, impacts your social life and your surroundings and how just the fact that she's alone with herself with her soul with her reflection that's all she sees and and, and it's easy that's just what happens when you're you know depressed very sad um, because you're just stuck in your head and you can't see you just can't see the light around you and I want to express that she's kind of like in a room that's kind of dark and she's just thinking about how much how much she feels lonely and alone and, and for the rest of her life she feels like she's going to be alone and lonely and you kind of see her in her natural state, her hair is everywhere, it's not properly, um, you know, she didn't, she didn't like uh, do her hair all nice and pretty, she's just in her home, she's comfortable, she's naked and she's just like, oh my gosh, am I going to find love? I don't think so and, and yeah, so that's kind of like how I was thinking because I, I knew in my head, in my heart, that it was impossible that no one could love me for who I was or because of how I look like. I felt like, oh my gosh, it cannot be that it would be, like I just, I just didn't believe that it was going to be impossible. But it felt impossible because of my surroundings, because no one desired me, no one wanted me, no one would ask me out when I was growing up. And through that painting, I was able to express this old pain, I guess, um, and this old, these old ways that I used to think. 
um, these little ideas I used to have and I think that I just want to help people understand that once you accept yourself people will see you as you are and you need to want people to love you for you and not want to hide uh, behind those beauty standards behind all these lies um, just so you could feel comfortable temporarily but be afraid that if your partner really sees who you are they won't want to be with you but if you are yourself the person who's coming your way will have to love you as you are with everything that makes you you so yeah so <laughs> that's one painting um but also i want to kind of talk about something else um through my art practice i decided to create a tribe called Fiete Sute, which I kind of shared an image on my social media um, uh, that's like the, where I'm dressed as the chief of that tribe. Um, I, I created a garment with like a mannequin, I painted the mannequin and created a wig and like a pubic hair braid uh, to kind of show how this tribe celebrates body hair and to the point of people thinking that this was a real tribe and i had to tell them no it's not a real tribe it's just complete imagination and but why you know why did i want to create something completely new why did i want to do that and, and it's, it's a really important question and it's something that i will answer right now <laughs> um but i created um a new tribe because i felt i wanted to kind of belong somewhere i felt you know, all my life growing up, I felt I didn't belong anywhere. And I think that escapism is so important <laughs> in this world. When we're suffering, we can escape through books, we can escape through art, going to museums, we can escape through watching movies. And, and for me, art is a form of escapism. It's a form where you could either learn or you could either jump into a world and just feel comfortable in it and, or, or even lose yourself in it and to me that's what art is all about and I created these characters who embrace themselves and, and fiete means um, pride in Haitian Creole and um, suhu means uh, divine in uh, Guéry which is a Ivorian dialect so yeah so I created that tribe which kind of means like proud to be chosen proud to be chosen by god and i started just making up words too i just was like having so much fun with that and i presented all my work at uh, my solo exhibition here are a few images i completely transformed the the gallery space but fake grass blue walls symbols that i created as well and just brought the brought the the tribe to life you know and i still am developing it still um and I'm just so excited to talk about it because I feel like this is something I'm not sharing enough with y'all. And it's something that's really all my life. Like, this is my career. It is, besides body hair activism. But, like, my body hair activism also goes into my art. They are just one as well. Um, but I wanted to kind of, like, talk about my work and share that with y'all because I don't talk about it enough. <laughs> So yeah, so um, here's one artwork as well that's part of the tribe. This call, this one is called um, Young Fiete Measuring Her Sacred Braid. And uh, basically in that tribe, uh, something that's part of that tradition is that there's a day where they really like decorate their pubic hair, add fake hair of course, and just braid it and put like jewelry and all these things in it. And just a woman who's like in her room and um just like measuring it seeing if it's pretty because in the tribe that i created i basically said that like there's this competition that happens where people just decorate their hair decorate their pubic hair the person with the most creative hairstyle and pubic braids and body hair uh, gets to be the next chief of the tribe so in my tribe it's more like either you're chosen because you're the hairiest um, in the tribe or through a competition and why I got kind of like inspired by <laughs> my own tribe so my Ivorian aunt um, from yeah my Ivorian aunt uh, Ivorian means like from the country of Cote d'Ivoire which is in Africa um, basically she kind of shared with me that I am very hairy and that you know um, on my dad's side of the family all the women are very hairy and that's part of our tribe because in the way tribe which is where I'm 
from. I'm from the Wei tribe. Uh, in that tribe, women were extremely hairy and it was seen as something beautiful. And if you had a beard, it was like a sign of authority so you could become a chief of the tribe. Um, and so I kind of got inspired by that. I thought, oh my gosh, this is so cool. You know, can you imagine like someone having like a woman having a beard and she could become chief because it's seen as a sign of authority and it's something beautiful too. Uh, so yeah, so I wanted to kind of like create a tribe uh, kind of inspired by my own and to create characters that are proud but also that are sharing, you know, traditions and a culture with each other and growing together and, and where creativity is very much encouraged where each individual creative mind and identity is encouraged. And so yeah, so that's what I kind of wanted to do in this um, tribe that I've created. Here's another artwork where I could kind of like show y'all what I was talking about when I mean like it, um, individual identity. Uh, this is the art of interpretation. And so each member has a different hairstyle, different, you know, um, different costume, uh, well, different outfit. And each of them basically in that tribe, they learn at a young age how to, um, how to braid, how to, you know, sew. And so I think that I want to kind of like, um, that's kind of like a way for me to um, show this tribe that um, really embraces each other and, and, and themselves. Uh, and they show the creativity through their colors and all these things. And that, that's also um, very much inspired by African culture and our, our different hairstyles uh, that we used to have before colonization. Um, and that some still remain here today, but um, we lost a lot of our traditions and uh, hairstyles. <laughs> That's what I wanted to talk about today. Um, I think that art has helped me a lot. Oh, yeah. Lastly, I kind of wanted to show y'all what I was talking about um, when I was talking about the chief. I think I showed y'all the image of the chief I was talking about where I kind of like was wearing the outfit um, that I made to represent the chief of that tribe. And um, here is the mannequin I was talking about. Um, with the braid and that was presented in in the Biennale um, It's like a group exhibition that was happening in Montreal as well And so I presented that work with a photo uh, of myself wearing the outfit and um, also a video So yeah, so um, that's what I do <laughs> uh, I do and I can't wait to share more works with y'all and kind of like share my process and my pr and the progress of how I kind of like start and finish an artwork and you know how um, you know where I get my ideas <laughs> as well anyways see you next time and have a great day